Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video, as you can see, I am going to talk about the design of a shuttle. And we want a shuttle capable of bringing back Luton scrap from orbit of the moon. And in general, to be able to pick up all the little stuff that we've left around. And maybe even grab Valney's scrap from orbit of Gilly. Uh, we need something with long range, so this is not going to be a low carbon orbit system. And we would also like it to be able to carry a lander for Kirstead on the surface of the moon so we can uh, save Kirstead. So the plan, planned mission for this, initial mission, is to carry the lander for Kirstead and also carry some sort of claw to grab Valny's scrap and dock it into the bay. So those two things need to happen. And now, given that, again, we need to have more Delta V than the real shuttle had, which was about 400 meters per second, uh, which was uh, enough for certain low Earth orbit operations. But we have gotten to the point where I need to put on the engines. You can see we've got a center of mass all the way up front here and a center of lift all the way in the back. That's not good. That's too far apart. Part of that is because I've underfueled this, but when we're coming back through the atmosphere, this will be empty. So... It, we need to uh, pull that back, and that's by putting engines in the back. But what engines? Now, nominally, the Vector is the shuttle engine. I mean, it's uh, KS-25 because the real shuttle engines are the RS-25s. But are they really the best choice? They, I mean, of course, they're expensive, but we're expecting to bring them back, so that doesn't matter too much um, in principle, as long as we can bring them back. Uh, but... What are their benefits? What is the benefit of the Vector? Well, it's got a pretty good thrust-weight ratio, right? It's 1,000 kilonewtons, or 100 tons of thrust, roughly, uh, on 4 tons of mass. So that's a thrust-weight ratio of 25, which is horrible in real life. But it's pretty good in Kerbal, uh, in stock Kerbal. Uh, if we take a look at the main sail, for instance, we got 150 tons of thrust on 6 tons, so that's again 25. So it's a, actually the main sails thrust weight ratio intrinsically is the same as the Vector's, but the Vector has better sea level ISP and be better vacuum ISP than the main sail, so that's a plus. But we've got the skipper now. I know so the, the main sail is just big, right? It's 2.5 meters. But the skipper was also 2.5 meters until they decided to give us alternate models. Now, the Vector, I don't believe, has alternate models. Uh, but the Skipper does now. And, of course, there's the Skiff as well. But the Skiff is a little bit too small. It's uh, 300 kilonewtons, one point. And you can see that's uh, not quite a thrust-weight ratio of 20. So it's lesser than the Vector. But as far as thrust-weight ratio, the Skipper, six, 65 tons on uh, 3 tons of mass. So that's a thrust-weight ratio above 20. Not quite 25, but it's still above 20. Uh, so that's at least in the ballpark. Uh, if we take a look at the Wolfhound, uh, that has worse. That's basically a thrust weight ratio of maybe uh, 11, around 11, 12. And, uh, but it's very efficient, right? It's got the good vacuum ISP, but the shuttle engines have to be able to work at sea level as well. Uh, the Poodle, same problem with the sea level and uh, the thrust weight ratio is uh, not that great. It's a little bit better than the Wolfhound, but anyway. So there are vacuum engines. The Bobcat, if we take a look at thrust weight ratio, it's 20 exactly. So uh, the Skipper has a better thrust weight ratio than the Bobcat. and But the Bobcat is cheaper overall for the thrust. But again, we, we don't really care that much about the price. But the thing about the Skipper now is that it has the other models, right? If we were stuck with this model, they wouldn't be that great. But we have the Bear model. And actually, that looks better to me than the Vector. <laughs> the Vector... I, th I like this model better than the Vector. And do, do we need three engines providing 100 tons of thrust? That's 300 tons of thrust. With our new SRBs, I don't think we need that much. The SRBs can take care of it, um, I think. It depends on how much we need to carry. We might need to mock this up and figure it out. But if we have three of these, we'll already have... Oh, uh, maybe 250 tons of thrust, which is pretty good. So, yeah. Uh, no, that's uh, 200 tons of thrust, my mistake. Well, anyway, let me work on this a little bit more, but I wanted to make note of this skipper change, and we'll see how it works out for us. Okay, so here's what we've got now. I've moved wing, the wing up a little bit, as expected, because of the center mass and center of lift. 
and uh, put the little body flap in. So we've got one of the wing connector type Ds with two of those little elevons. And I've already made sure that the correct control surfaces are doing the correct thing. So these are doing pitch, these are doing pitch and roll, uh, these are doing pitch, and that's doing yaw. And so we have a spare tank here. This is going to help us get to the moon. So we're going to jettison that after we get to the moon. We see a little lunar lander here. This is going to be automated. So we have the Probe of the Woodine Octo 2 and we've got an antenna. And uh, it's going to just go down there and our Kerbal is going to get in and it's going to come back up and dock back here. So it has its small propellant and little RCS ports for the redocking. Uh, one thing I've just realized I've forgotten is this has to have comms on it uh, to as a relay as well. Maybe we'll have it back here. It's a little bit icky, but... Or you know what? Maybe I can have the fuel cell counterbalance it. So I'm going to move the fuel cell to the back here and counterbalance the antenna with that. I might not need to counterbalance it at all, but it makes me feel better. Okay, so we put the fuel cell there now. And... We have the lander, we have a uh, control core because I'm not going to have this be crewed on its first test flight. So we have a proto woodine hex there and the lander has its own octo, the lander has an antenna, this will relay back to Kerbin and uh, yeah, we just land like that and hopefully it'll be all fine. We have a little tug here, now by the time we get to the moon that tank will be gone and so the tug will bring back the intended pod. The, um, oh, let me get rid of that fuel tank. Uh, Luton Scrap. Luton Scrap is a Mark II cockpit. So we're going to just put that in the back here. Uh, we'll grab it by its belly and bring it into the bay. And that will be gone. So our balance will look... Uh, this will be empty. And this might be empty. Uh, well, this might be somewhat depleted. But basically, we're about there. That's the center of mass and center lift. The center of mass is pretty far forward, and that worries me. Uh, this could do with canards, potentially. Maybe that's something that we need to do. This is a test flight, but we're going to be bringing back two Kerbals, so it makes me nervous. Anyway, at least we haven't gotten it attached to the Kerbals. So I'm going to fuel this up, and then what we see is, well... Fueled up, it's pretty close, but we won't be coming back fueled up. It's 52 tons. We haven't turned the engines yet because we have to see how it is with with the external tank attached. Otherwise, I did use the Terriers as our OMS engines. So the, the RCS fuel tanks are just for the RCS and also for replenishing the tugs, especially when we do more tug stuff. And also if we end up having a station to dock with. But the Terriers are probably the most efficient choice for the in-orbit in stuff. And of course they're pointing through the center of mass. As it would be, you know, halfway between it, this shuttle being depleted of fuel. So, yeah. You can see the RCS ports here. That's one of those thruster blocks. We've got a place anywhere one there. And a triple collection there. Though, maybe I need the downward facing ports too. We've got the side up. Hmm, yeah, I always forget the downward ones because they're the least convenient to place. But these are so well heat, heat shielded, 2600 Kelvin, that I don't even need to think about that really. But I'll try and make it legit. It'll be something like that. All of the place anywhere ones are tuned down. To 50% we need to make sure that sure the, so that the other one kill Newton ones work the same way. The shuttle actually had two different sets of RCS. Uh, little tinier vernier thrusters for fine controls and then the larger RCS ports. Okay. So that's the idea. And you can see the wheels are right behind the center mass when it's fully loaded. Um, on the off chance that we want to take off with it with the engines or something. Anyway, since it doesn't usually take off, the placement of the wheels just needs to make sure that it doesn't flop on its tail on landing. 
All right, well, now let us integrate it with the rest of the stack and see how that works. So this time we're gonna try and have it so it's not flopping around as the external tank gets lighter. That's important. And the way the real shuttle did this is it has a heavier tank on top. The On top is the oxygen tank, which is really heavy, so it keeps the center of mass really high so the engines have an easier time pointing through it. We can't really do that with Kerbal very well. Well, that's a lot of delta V. Not enough thrust to weight ratio, potentially. It's actually a longer burn time than the shuttle has. So we've got that those tanks locked, right? All that's locked. Yep. I did some auto strutting too, by the way. Okay, so we have too much fuel. We really don't need that much. I guess we're going to go with the 3.75 meter tanks, after all. Nose cone, even. Oh, God, why? <laughs> we don't have that slope with this. Um, we'll have a white top. And so, once the boosters separate, this one should definitely have drained. Let's see. What's the total burn time here? That's 4 minutes and 40 seconds. The boosters will last, we'll try and make them last 1 minute and 40 seconds. That's about 3 minutes right there. So that's the situation when the boosters separate. Okay, so that initially points pretty well through and if we drain that tank and then that tank. What you see is the center mass is sort of sliding this way. Oh, I forgot to drain this one. And I think that's not too bad. <laughs> I think that's not too bad. At the start, we wouldn't be very well balanced. But then at the start, there's going to be the boosters. Okay, what is the nature of the boosters? Well, for the shuttle, the shuttle side, the SSMEs provide 20% of the thrust. We probably want to provide more thrust with them in this situation. How big are the Clydesdales? Well, they're, they're pretty shuttle light. Hmm. They're a little bit long. Each Pollux booster is basically two skippers. So it's not quite as much as we would like. The delta V is fine, but the surface thrust to weight ratio is iffy. So that's not quite enough. Okay, so right now these are lasting 86 seconds, but we wanted 1 minute and 40 seconds out of them. So we're going to thrust limit a little bit. And that'll be close enough. They only have one degree of vector range, so we're gonna have a fun time. Okay, and we need to make sure that they separate off correctly. So the trick to this is, at least with the way I do the shuttle, is normally you'd put them like this, but to make sure it doesn't hit the shuttle, I put them centered on this line instead, basically. So instead of... We, we just shift them over by one notch from where they would be. So if they were like that, we put them a little bit more like that. And of course the bottom ones make sure that they don't blow at the shuttle. Okay, 1.3 is our sea level thrust weight ratio now. Not high by any stretch. I'm not wanting to do a roll maneuver, so we're going to go out like this. What are the chances this is going to work right? Well, I mean, it's conventional. Unlike the other thing I made, the Scavenger 1, that was less conventional, so more likely to have chaos. But the limited gimbal range on the boosters really makes it tough. 
and we should get rid of any kerbals involved. Out, out. Okay, well, it's 144,000. That's not the most expensive launch we've done. But it would be sad to have it go bad, so there is that going on too. All right, let's uh, let's give it a go. Okay, well, here goes nothing. SAS on, throttle up. Will it flop? Will it be okay? Let's find out. And launch. Okay, power. Oh, clamp, clamp, clamp issue, clamp issue. Uh, you might need to move the clamp stairs. It does the power slide thing. Come back over here. We have extra Delta V. <laughs> we got that going for us. Okay, well, could have been worse, you know. We've seen get that go worse. First flight of this. Really, the tough part's gonna be bringing it back down. I don't know how that's gonna go. Uh, the boosters... See, in real life, the boosters have a thrust tail off so that they won't provide ridiculous amounts of power at this part. But we don't have that. In older shuttles, I used to cluster a bunch of the kickbacks, like seven of them, and then uh, change what amount of propellant they have in order to make sure that there was a thrust tail off. But anyway, I think we will be able to keep it in control here and separate. Okay, they're off cleanly. And we're back to being balanced. It is rough there though. Uh, it's pushing me down a little bit too much, I think. Let me make sure that the fuel is being spent properly. Up, uh, up, up. I took my hand off of the. Oh god, we're doing this thing. Okay, hold on, hold on. We can coast for a little bit. Take stock of the situation. It looks like we don't have them positioned as ideally as I would like. We could do a bunch of different things to solve that. But first, I want to get the antenna out. We can spin stabilize it. If necessary, that's another option. Or I could or I could activate the RCS. This is highly irregular. The situation will need to be reviewed. We have way too much Delta V too. I wonder how much the shuttle can actually carry to orbit. But the densest thing I guess we can carry is ore, and the densest useful thing would be fuel. Okay, well technically we want to dispose of the external tank, not bring it into space with us. Um, let's just make sure that we didn't accidentally use some fuel. That's all locked. Open. Open. That big tank is still fine. Everything there is fine. Okay, I think that's all right. So we activate the ter I should action group the main engines. But yeah, we have a lot of leftover fuel here. And we don't want to activate the spark there on the lander. But we do want to get rid of the external tank. Now, unlocking the tank for the transfer to the moon. Well, we'll I'll probably need more than that. But. All right. Well, anyway, we're in space. We're using power, so let's get the fuel cell on. And let us see about our rescue of these Kerbals. 
So that would be 295 to capture and then a little bit, uh, well, about 117 relative speed there. Anyway, we'll do the first burn first, of course. So we have to sort of take into account that the engine's pointing like that. So we just want to be a little bit above the marker, the maneuver node. And we'll unlock this fuel too. In total, we have 1,621 right now. Will it be enough? Hmm. Well, that depends exactly how much we're carrying at any given moment. We'll be dumping this tank. That's sort of wasteful. Maybe we'll bring back the tank. But we have to dump the tank in order to get that thing in the bay. That was a bad idea. Well, we could deorbit it, though. Hmm. But we should re... Anyway, let's go. We're... Basically right over a place and we've got Comsat 4 overhead. So that's good. I think we'll probably stay in the high orbit with the shuttle and have the lander do the rest of it instead of bringing the entire shuttle down to a lower orbit from Luton's scrap. It's draining evenly but actually I want to get rid of that tank. We'll recover it some other time. Okay, hold on. Stop. A couple. Oop, don't hurt the little. Wrong way. Okay. Um, wait till it clears the vertical stabilizer since we're going to be going forward in this direction again. Uh, maybe a little bit more RCS. Okay, we locked the mob propellant there, at least. Alright, off it goes. I feel like we should just probably point prograde. Let's use the RCS for the rest. We've got a lot of mob propellant. Perhaps too much mob propellant. I think I'll accept this for now. Well, I think that's cheaper than what we originally had planned, so... Okay, 2.6 kilometers. Looks like about 300 meters per second altogether. I think we'll go with that. That'll leave us with 450 to get come back. Not necessarily what I want, but we'll see. Okay, orientation doesn't matter for power because we have the fuel cell. I There is Kerbin. All right, on we go. Okay, approaching the moon. We do have to worry about comms though, but I think... There, we will have comms, so that'll be fine. The necessary precision for this burn, though, is a problem because of the way our terriers are angled. Seems better balanced right now. Oh, the maneuver node's wandering. Okay, well, point one. How far off could it be? Ooh, that's a bit off. Okay, back, 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 back. And it's basically the same location we did the orbital capture burn at, so we should still have comms. Would be handy if Lut well, we have to grab Luton's scrap, so we can't just have Luton use his jetpack for the 50 meters per second or anything. Okay, well, let's see if our little drone works. Maybe we should get a little bit closer. It's the same one that I used on the scavenger, though, so we're not expecting it not to work. Okay, RCS, slow down. Okay, let's see. We still have RCS in these? Yep. Okay, so I think this is ready to go. A couple. We have comms with the little drone. It is armed. Yeah, it's probably as good as it's going to get. All right. Okay, we've got it. Now we control from the docking port. 
and get back into the shuttle onto that docking port. I don't know what that is flying by. Arnard's wreckage. Arnard's wreckage is right is right there. If only we had decided to salvage that too. But we did not. Up, oh, we've got magnetism. Um got magnetism, but it's not quite there yet. Huh? Oh, there we go. It's docked. It looked weird for a sec though. It doesn't look like it's colliding with anything. So oh, but a little bit oh, it's really tight to the hmm. Yeah, that's a problem. That might cause havoc when we want to release that. Okay, so rotate. <laughs> It's a little bit comical how smooth it is with the reaction wheels, of course. Yeah, maybe not. Especially with that docking port there. Yeah, it's magnetism, but I can't get to it. Alright, we'll have to do it the other way around, and... That side's gonna be interesting. Gosh darn it. Or we could let go of this and then try and grab it again. Okay, stop. Uh, grab it a little bit closer to the nose. Alright, that's more in the center. Let's try that. Okay. Alright. The shuttle's gone way off now. Okay, in it goes. Looks better this time. All right. Okay, and there should be clearance for the lander. Speaking of which, let's get on with the lander.